idea. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, and friends. I don't see that. Friends. We are, we are yeah, these are the friends. And uh, I'm not alone now, and you are not my only friend. I have other friends. <laughs> but welcome, welcome again on this Thursday night. Um, you know what to do share the link, um, invite a friend, invite a brother, a cousin. Um, I think today is going to be important. Yes. You know, I have remember, a you have a feeling. Yeah. Last week, um, I brought the topic um, of duality. Wow. And I think we had some we had nice times yeah. in about duality. Very nice. Today it's Eniola's turn. Oh. So right. I don't know what he's gonna to bring today, but he has some interest. He's got something interesting. <laughs> and his face is, is giving me vibes of very interesting. So make sure that you're sharing the link, make sure that um, people are joining now because it's gonna be a hot topic today you know where well, you know you know how it is on flow with Leo. we just flow basically so i know some of you are driving home um i know some of you are in your living room some of you are in your bedroom some of you are even wrapped up in bed cozily that's fine because that's what we do here we flow we flow but don't do it alone share the link invite a friend call somebody let them know that flow with leo is on right now yes and it's going to be a blessing in your life. Amen. 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 Well, I, I don't think um, we, we need to waste time. I think we'll go straight into it. I know some of you are asking that how come I didn't say Sati is going to bring a topic. Mm. Gender balance and all of this. Yeah. Uh, don't worry, you should bring a topic. Sure. Wow. Come in soon. Yeah, come in soon. Come soon. You know, I'm, I'm afraid of her. You know, the first the first ever day I ever met Sati. Uh, first time you know, I've ever seen her in my life. And I, I met her in a country somewhere. Story time. Yeah, story time. Story time. yeah, and I met her and I was like, okay. And um, who is this? Hi. She said, hi. And how are you? And you introduced, I'm, I'm Leo. She said, I'm Sati. Spoke, spoke, spoke. So I, I mean, we're going to know conversation. So I decided to ask her, like, okay, so what are your interests? What would you like to be when you grow up? Because you know that's what people ask. Yes. Yeah. When you ask people, someone, some say, I'd like to be a doctor. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure she said a doctor. Oh no, she said doctor. No doctor. Oh, then I'm curious. As well. Yeah. Said, some, some say like a lawyer. A lawyer. No, that's, that's, not, what that's not what she said. I mean, that's a surprise. Yeah, some people even say that they want to be a celebrity or something. Okay. But no, that's also not what she said. She said she wants to be a marriage counselor. Hey! <laughs> wow. Whoa! Yeah. Wow. Is she married? Is she married? She, at the time, she wasn't. And at this time, <laughs> she was. I'm still in love. Yes, that's true. But hey, dreams, say eh? Dreams. Keep on dreaming. Come on. Yeah, keep on dreaming. That has nothing to do with what we have today. That's just me, you know, sharing a few stories, how I met and Santi. But anyway, to move straight on to it, last week it was duality. This yeah. week, Eniola is bringing us a topic. Eniola, what's it gonna be? Take it away, brother. Look, I'm excited because wow. the reason is because this is such an interesting topic. <laughs> because I feel like with this topic, Christianity is separated into two. Some people agree, some people disagree. Mm -hmm. Some people agree. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a completely different question. But some people agree, but mm -hmm. can't stop. Some people agree, but have stopped. Hey. So it's like we're about to go into a whole. Okay. Which topic is Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. <laughs> we're talking about fornication. Hey. <laughs> oh, okay. So, Okay. I feel like some people are nervous right now. Some oh, people are nervous. They're like, hey, some people are about to go. Don't exit out. Don't no, no, no. no. The right thing, thing to do is share, 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 share. share, share, share. Stay on, stay on, stay on. Yeah. Fornication. 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 Okay. Fornication. Wow. So I think the first question we should answer is like, what is fornication? Okay. Mm. What is fornication? So fornication is sex outside of marriage. Mm. Just to put it plain and simple, sex mm. outside of marriage. Okay. When you have sex with somebody outside of marriage, that's mm -hmm. fornication. Mm -hmm. Simple. There's a step up, which is when you have sex when you are married with somebody else, mm -hmm. then it's adultery. No. That, that's a different version. No. We're talking about fornication. That's a great version. That's a great version. We're talking about fornication. So I think this is a, it's a topic that a lot of people struggle with, mm -hmm. um, especially with young people. Yeah. And we have so many young people nowadays. I think I heard um, our full pastor, Bishop Dagger, you know, saying one time, he said, our generation is probably the most corrupted in a mm -hmm. sense. It's like, take for example, with pornography, 
He said back in the days, like to have access to pornography, you must be the most corrupt, mm. yeah. like perverted type yeah, of yeah. person to find that. Mm. Because like not this day, not not this day, it's available. Because like then it only existed in magazines and it was called blue films. Mm. So it's like it's so difficult to find. But today, today it's like, is it not ninety percent of internet traffic is is just because of pornography? Yeah, so true. I think it's one of the things that people these days struggle with. Mm. And another thing that with it is as well is because people nowadays feel like if I haven't had sex at this age, it's like I'm not. Normal. What's the word? I'm not normal. It's almost like to be a virgin at this age doesn't make sense. <laughs> so it's like, that's why I said at the beginning, it's like Christianity, with this topic, I feel like Christianity is divided. Mm -hmm. Some people agree with it, some people don't agree with it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's a very interesting topic to go through. So I think you should buckle down. Oh, yeah. yeah. It is, yeah, it is yeah. interesting, you know, because I mean, like you're saying, I mean, you say some people agree and some people don't. But that's why we're happy about the Bible. Yes. Because the Bible is true. Mm -hmm. so, so whatever the Bible says actually is true. what it is. And then people get nervous about this topic. And I yeah. think um, also it's not really spoken about in many churches. Mm -hmm. um, because um, some maybe some priests or some pastors are not sure mm -hmm. how it will go. Yeah. So they kind of avoid it. There's so many other topics to talk about. But you know, I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited yeah. that you brought yeah. it up. Yeah, it's a very good Because, like you said, it's 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 a, it's a struggle. It's a real struggle yeah. for people these days, and and a lot of the time, people can't really talk about it, so they can't get the answers that they need. Yes. Yeah, so I'm guessing that to, tonight on Flow Yeah. Some people yeah. are going to yeah. get those answers. Yeah. 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 So I think you should keep staying on because aside from just talking about fornication, we're not just going to leave you that way. We're actually going to tell you how to avoid mm -hmm. fornication yeah. so beautiful. i think you should stay until the end so i think let's read ephesians 5 verse 3 it says that but fornication and all uncleanness mm -hmm. or covetousness let it not be named among you mm -hmm. as be become of sins so mm -hmm. the verse is basically telling us that when you become a saint when you're saved one of the things that shouldn't exist like amongst us as christians is fornication mm. it's 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 so specific that paul talks about this because when you read um i can't remember what book it was and um, it was reported to paul that fornication was named amongst the church mm. and even of a certain kind where it's like brothers are sleeping with sisters mm. and it's like it's not it's not normal to have so it's almost like one of the things you see paul talk about is like fornication mm. not even in in the sense of um sinners or anything he was talking about in the church mm -hmm. like he's talking about in church mm -hmm. so it's like in church you find out that there's so many people who are fornicating mm -hmm. like it's a normal thing like if we were to do a survey on sunday mm -hmm. who slept with somebody this week mm -hmm. you lift your hand it will not be easy. <laughs> it's not going to be a straightforward process so yeah it's 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 such a it's such a it's, it's such a strong and difficult topic and just just like you said mm -hmm. it's something that pastors don't want to talk about yeah, it's yeah. almost like speaking about it it's almost like a taboo or something yeah. to talk about something like that in church but it's something that we struggle with and if we're not open and honest about it it's very very difficult to find a way to mm -hmm. to end that to end that um to end that struggle yeah mm -hmm. so and i mean that last week you were saying that um the, the, these are not these are not just problems for people somewhere yeah these are problems for us christians yeah that we have and, and i mean i would like to say that um, none, none of us is um, none of us is beyond or above. Sorry, yeah. this issue. This is for everyone. So I mean, I know some of you. Some of you are watching, and mm -hmm. I know you. You were almost born, born again, mm -hmm. and um, you've been you've been a Christian for so many years. <laughs> I'm serving the Lord. I'm working on the chest. But please, <laughs> do not switch off and do not take yourself out of this discussion yeah. because it, it also applies to you yeah. just as it applies to me mm -hmm. just as it applies to George I mean I know he looks like a saint but it's also yeah, yeah, yeah. applies to George <laughs> I look like a saint <laughs> yes. and you know most of all you know everybody looks at a woman and a girl and says oh she's so innocent but it applies to you too yes. Mm -hmm. yes. it's sati and so she has a flower in her head yeah. she looks yeah. so yeah. it's the flower the it's flower is like the glasses it makes you it's like the the <laughs> <glasses>. <laughs> yes 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 she looks so Pure and I, I believe that she's pure. Mm. She's yes, pure. Okay. Yes. The, lamb, the lamb without blemish. Oh <laughs> yes, but it also applies to her and it also applies to you at home. So yeah. so keep watching, stay watching, and do not switch off. Do not switch off in your mind yeah. because I believe your life is going to be saved 
by this discussion. Mm -hmm. Take us away, Neil. Definitely. So, and like we've been talking about, one of the places you find fornication is in the church. Mm -hmm. And the issue is that when you have the church, fornication ends up destroying the church. It mm -hmm. messes up the body of Christ. It's, it's almost like you have maybe one guy in the choir and then he slept with the, the lady in this corner on that stand, the lady on that corner, the lady in that corner. The it's, famous choir. Yeah, the famous choir. <laughs> <laughs> the famous choir. The famous choir. <laughs> Mercy. Mercy. So it's like it messes up the church. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't allow the body of Christ to function in a certain way. Right. So and and there's so many ways that it just it, it it just messes up the body of Christ. So one of the things that we're going to talk about now is how fornication destroys the church mm -hmm. and how it destroys us. And one of the first things we have to realize is that fornication is disobedience. Okay. Whether you believe it or not, mm -hmm. um, the Bible says that fornication is wrong. So. Um, in First Samuel fifteen twenty two, it says that it is better to obey yes. than to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't even see how fornicating is like sacrifice, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> One thing about fornication is, is disobedience to God. That's right. Whether you think it's right, whether you say to yourself, you know, my body is my body, I can mm -hmm. do whatever I want to do with it. And, you know, the only way when I'm attracted to someone, the only way to express my love is by sleeping with her. Whatever your theory mm -hmm. is yes. with fornication, is disobedience that's towards it. That's what God said. No, God said yeah, no, fornication. no fornication. Yes. Like Paul says in Ephesians, he says that let fornication not, he said not once, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. even once, be yes. named amongst that's the right. body of Christ. Right. Because if the church is fornicating, then what makes us better than the world? What mm -hmm. makes us different from the world? Right. If it's like the world does this and we are saying it's okay for us, then what, what makes us different? Yeah, sure. there's, there's absolutely no difference. So one of the things we must realize is that fornication is disobedience. We flat out, God has said no to this. And whether you like it or not, when you fornicate, where it leads you to it, in the end would be hell. Mm -hmm. And I think one amazing thing about fornication that I realized, like I was talking to somebody about this recently, um, it's almost like when you even sleep with people, it's almost like you are sowing something mm -hmm. in a sense. It's kind of like, say, for example, you're the type of guy who you did this to this person's daughter, you did this to this person's daughter, you made this one commit this abortion, you made this one commit that abortion. It's almost like you're sowing a seed for yourself mm -hmm. in the sense that one day you will have a child. Mm -hmm. And then um, what's that scripture in Lamentations 5 verse 7? It says that the sins of the mm. fathers have been put on the children yeah. so it's almost like now somebody so has to pay for all mm. the things that you have that's true. pretty much done that's true. so it's like that there's consequences for disobedience that's and true. this is one of them mm. it's the same way david decided that he was going to sleep with Bathsheba. Yeah. Although he was a man after God's heart, God forgave him all of that stuff. There were still consequences for the That's things right. that he did. Right. I think the first child that um, he was supposed to have from Bathsheba died, I believe. Well, one of the children died. Mm -hmm. And God said this, he prayed earnestly, he fasted and prayed, but that child had to die. And even he knew because immediately he found out the child was dead. He just got up and moved on with his life because it's almost like he knew that look, this, I can't, avoid it it's like i have to reap what i've sown mm -hmm. even his son absalom decided to sleep with all his wives right. in a tent it's, it's mm -hmm. almost like that one thing that mm -hmm. he did had mm -hmm. so, so many consequences, many consequences. Yeah. you can't even explain it it's yeah. like it's, it's a man after god's heart fine it will never change but still that thing would never change there's still consequences for it so yeah. fornication is such a deep talk even as we we're talking about last week um, about um not even then the judges was yeah, yeah. Samson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we're talking about Samson. Same thing with Delilah. Mm -hmm. Being with Delilah, wanting to stay with that lady, he lost everything. Mm -hmm. He lost it. It's like that ended his life, his ministry, everything he wanted to achieve. So because the disobedience, the disobedience to God, it yeah. all has consequences. That's true. And I, I mean, I would say that um, one of the greatest things that we know and we have in Christianity mm -hmm. is is sacrifice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the epitome of Christ is that sacrifice that he made mm -hmm. and we know about Christ because of the sacrifice or we, we are saved by that sacrifice mm -hmm. that he made so for the Bible to then go on to say that it is despite the greatness of sacrifice mm -hmm. it is still better to be obedient mm -hmm. then obedience must be really really Very important. important and in fact when I think about it the way I think about obedience is I see it as um, God's love language mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what God understands. That's what. That's how God perceives love. Yeah. Because even the verse says that um, 
if you love me, you will keep, keep my command, yeah. my commandments yeah. or my yeah. um, instructions or um, whatever I say. You obey me. Yeah. You yeah. obey my commandments. Mm -hmm. That's his love language. Yeah. So then, what in, in a sense, what you're saying um, is that fornication is against loving God. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's against loving God, which yeah. is a very serious thing it's because very, it's yeah. directly opposite to his will for us, which is love the Lord with all your hearts. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what yeah. you're saying that disobedience is you saying that doesn't show that you love God. Mm -hmm. There was a church that really disobeyed God. And because, like you said, the love language of God is obedience. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what happened to the church when they chose to directly continuously disobey him. Mm -hmm. In Romans 1, 24, it says that wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's like God had been trying to get this church to obey, mm -hmm. but they would not obey. Mm -hmm. It is as though they believe that they're in their own eyes, they were, <clears throat> sorry, wiser than God somehow. And they sort of believe that it wouldn't really do anything to God or it won't really affect how God treats them in a way. Mm -hmm. But look at verse 29. Verse 29 talks about what they were doing. He said that being filled with all unrighteousness, and then the second one is fornication. Mm -hmm. Is that part of the things they were doing, fornication was a part amongst those things. Mm -hmm. And like you were saying that if, if in this era right now where we are, fornication is one of the wildest things, that we have because almost everywhere it looks like everywhere on social media they're advocating for fornication and cleanliness. But look at this in his moments, he still brings it up and says that fornication was named among the members of this church. Mm -hmm. This is like one of the wildest things in this church, and it was direct disobedient. And I feel that if we do not understand in our generation that fornication is this terrible thing, what says God will not give us to that thing mm -hmm. as he did to this church? Yeah. Because like I keep warning you, love me, come back to me, mm. obey me, but it's like, oh, I can still do it alone. Yeah. 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 Fornication is dangerous. Yeah, it's, it's dangerous. I think um, it reminds me, like what you were saying is, the, um, like you can't see the effects that it'll have. I think Lamentations 5, so, verse 7. Um, and it reminds me of this chapter in a good general. Mm -hmm. And that chapter says, uh, the title of the chapter is, Beware of the short-term and long-term plans of the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. And I think one of the ways that the enemy plans something long-term is through fornication. Mm -hmm. Because as you're a young person, you know, maybe you're in uni, mm -hmm. maybe you're um, not even in uni, but nowadays, I think recently, uh, our full church pastor visited some islands. Mm -hmm. He was talking about how he saw, uh, they were saying that some of the, I think, 13-year-old girls, 12-year-old girls, had gotten pregnant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so even to say uni is now nowadays uni is like as far yeah. it's like it happens even in our days so it's like the devil actually sows a seed for the future mm -hmm. and the, sometimes the devil believes more in seed time and harvest than even christian while man slept the enemy sowed tears like he yeah. actually has faith in mm -hmm. seeds mm -hmm. so i think that one thing um, our full church pastor often talks about is how fornication destroys your future marriage mm. because it's difficult for you to stay with one partner yeah. because you've tasted so, so many, many different things. types of fornication, different inventions. But you're a young person, so you feel like it's time, mm -hmm. you know, you, yeah. you have scriptures to support you. It's good that a young man should bear the yoke. You know, let me use my strength for something. Mm. But you actually have to be aware that the enemy, like the... The long-term effects of fornication isn't just, oh, there may be a pregnancy, yeah. so I can nullify the devil destroying my life by birth yeah. control. Yeah. And then, it should I be pray to God, have mercy on me, Lord. Are you okay? Amen. Yeah. We're moving on. But there's long-term effects. There's long-term. And there's, there's, deep, there's deeper um, effects because, yeah. I mean, you say that, okay, maybe I don't want to have a child and all of that, mm. so... Um, I'm gonna use a condom, mm. but a condom does not stop you from dis disobeying God. Yeah, no. it doesn't take away. That's a takeaway <laughs> disobedience. <laughs> I just want you to <laughs> take away yeah. your condom. It does not make you more obedient. No, but you'd be surprised that some people actually believe. Yeah, that. No, I yeah, yeah. Yeah. As long as I use the condom, it's like, I'm fine. Really? Yeah. 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 I've actually heard of someone saying that as long as the girl also agrees, that right. it should be fine. Yeah. yeah. 
And yes, I mean, that, that's fine if they can tell us the verse. <laughs> they can tell us the verse. I, I, I will be agreeing with them. Yes. But it's not there, you know. After everything, everything is discussed and all the arguments, you know. Let, let's, let's, let's stick to the Bible. Because that's, that's what we believe in. Let's stick to the Word of God. We believe in the Bible. We believe in God. And I mean, I, I really liked what um, um, Enyola said earlier on. And he said, you know, um, no matter what theory you may have, yeah. what idea, what opinion, mm -hmm. that's fine, that's great. Mm -hmm. But what does the Bible say? Mm -hmm. And I believe once we know what the Bible says, that's what we will follow because that's we're Christians. Mm -hmm. And what he's told us so far is that the, the fornication is disobedience so to God. God. Yeah. S simple and short, yeah. no matter the excuse you make, mm -hmm. the reason you give, mm -hmm. the condoms you use, mm -hmm. the morning after yeah. pill you use, mm -hmm. it is still, still disobedience yeah. to God. Simple, plain as. And you know, it's working. I think somebody is being blessed today. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. <laughs> so, yeah, that's number one. Okay. Now, number two, fornication will destroy your soul. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 6.32 says that. But whosoever commits adultery or fornication mm -hmm. with a woman lacks understanding. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like when you fornicate, there's something that you don't know, yeah. that you're not realizing. So you think it's okay. Mm -hmm. So like there's something that's missing. And it says that, so he that does it destroys his own soul. So what you don't realize is that you are destroying yourself. So even if that brings me to the third point, which is that fornication also destroys your body. So I feel like those two go in places mm -hmm. like, you, the thing about fornication is now there is stealing, right? Which is also a sin. Mm -hmm. So you sinned against God. Mm -hmm. But when you fornicate, it doesn't just, have, it's not like, okay, God should deal with it and send his blood. Mm -hmm. There's something about you that's mm -hmm. affected physically. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you don't want, it's like the Bible says, you don't only sin against God, but you're sinning against your so, own body. Mm -hmm. body. You see? So it's like, Beautiful. now you're affecting not just god or anything but yourself mm -hmm. so now you find christians who even fornicate it's like slowly your spirituality starts to go down mm -hmm. maybe um you had been saved right then you started going to church you were reading the bible then you met this girl mm -hmm. then you were going on mm -hmm. fine you went two or three times wow. before you know it then the person stops coming to church they stop reading the bible then you're wondering why what, what happened to this person they were so zealous everything was fine and when you go behind it you find out that they've been sinning against their body and been drowning themselves with so much sin that now spirituality can't really exist mm -hmm. so it's like you're sinning against your own body it's like when it, it's one thing to steal it's one thing to lie but like those things don't necessarily affect you mm -hmm. but when you fornicate you're affecting yourself um, this, that sounds like self-harm yeah so it's, it's basically like self-harm you're literally harming yourself mm -hmm. in a sense so that's why the bible says that um the person who fornicates lacks understanding mm -hmm. it's like you don't get it. you don't realize that it's almost like you're jumping off a cliff mm -hmm. if that makes sense mm -hmm. it's like you fornicate and you think everything is fine because you get up and just wear your trousers and buckle your belt and we're okay mm -hmm. but you've sinned against your own body you've affected yourself um, and it's like um what was this verse? Um, how the Babylon mm. has filled has become a habitation, become a habitation of devils mm. because of their many fornications. Mm. So it's like now you fornicate with people, and now you open yourself to so many spirits. Mm. Your before you know it, it's like now you're filled with so many things. That's why, if let's say for example, like I, I've noticed this before. Maybe you never used to drink or smoke or anything, then you sleep with someone who does that. Mm -hmm. And you usually sleep with the person. Mm -hmm. Most people would say it as, oh, we live in the same house, so that's why I start to smoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, like there's there's something like a transference that has happened to, yeah. between you and the person. Yeah, like a soul tie. It's like now the issues that the person has, the burdens that the person has, it's like it's transferred on you too. So it's like you're literally affecting your own body. Because you've made a covenant. You've made a covenant with the person. Yeah, it's like, so anything that that person had, whatever troubles, issues, whether their mothers from their village was chasing, it's like now you're out of it. <laughs> you're yeah, you're included. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know about you, but personally, I have enough problems in life. <laughs> yeah. If it's possible, yeah. I would like to avoid, yes, yeah, reduce, and not add anyone else's um, village witches. And <laughs> it's, it's enough. 
I'm saying I think what Paul Flo Pastor because the other time he was leading us to pray for understanding. Mm -hmm. Without even knowing it, when we were praying for understanding, we're actually coming against the scripture, like mm -hmm. going mm -hmm. against the scripture that says that when you fornicate, mm -hmm. just that you lack understanding. And without even knowing what you're praying for, when we started praying about understanding, the spirit of understanding, to have the spirit of understanding, we're probably praying that God help us not to fornicate. Mm -hmm. But you have no idea that's what that's you're praying for. This is why you should even tune into flow every single time that mm -hmm. we have flow prayer meetings. Because mm -hmm. you pray against things that you don't even know you're praying against. Mm -hmm. Pray for what we do mm. not of. Yeah, yes, yes. I mean, I, I just want to ask Santi because you know we're talking about fornication. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't know about you, but generally in the church, and so fornication is a boy problem. Mm -hmm. I just want to ask: Do uh, girls have any? Uh, yeah, let's well, let's well, because it's like, it's like yeah, we are the sinful yeah, ones. Yeah, like and the guys. Yeah, the guys. The guys the general, and, uh, you feel like sleeping with all the girls, so well. But the girls, they are okay. I just want to know from your point of view. I mean, gender mm -hmm. balance. I think that that's a deception that there is in this generation or in generally in the world that fornication is a male problem. Oh. I think that fornication is actually, it, it's no respect of gender. Mm -hmm. It goes all along, all across because who is a guy fornicating with? Mm. Yeah, no, but generally speaking, people say that, oh, the guy was it's really in last yeah, thing yeah, and he went to get yeah. yeah. It may be so, but I also like to think that how, I don't know how about other girls, but I think girls have a you know, a certain level of self-control. Mm. Like they are able to direct relationships or direct encounters in a certain way. Mm. And unless she gives in, it may not be so easy for a guy to fornicate. So I mm. think that girls are equally to blame, if not more, I would like to believe in my opinion, that they are probably more to blame in a sense that they can they see where things are going early on. Mm -hmm. They can easily see that, oh, this guy, is leading me to this direction and you can easily avert mm. where it's going to mm. but when you don't you are subconsciously saying that yes let's communicate yeah mm. so i think it's not a male problem it's it's all about yeah. well I mean, you heard it from south from africa it's the girls it's the girls yeah she said it's the girls fault <laughs> not me i mean i didn't say it you know actually i i um i remember i, I spoke about it before i don't know why i spoke about it but um i saw an article mm -hmm. about I think it was the the people that watched pornography in 2022 or something, mm -hmm. and I was talking about the viewer, like they they showed the um, statistics from yeah. the pornography side, mm -hmm. um, and then they showed the percentage of male viewers, the and percentage of um, female viewers. Mm -hmm. I was shocked. Who watches more? The percentage of male was 49 percent. Whoa! Whoa. Females, Whoa. 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 Gender balance. Gender balance. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you know what they say, what a guy can do a girl. Perhaps. Messy. Oh, man. I, mean, I even think, to be fair, like, nobody should fight me on this. Please don't call me. Don't call me after this. I personally think like in a lot of cases of fornication like sati was saying like the girl can see earlier on i even rather think that most girls are in control mm -hmm. if that makes sense like they they probably plan the whole thing out mm -hmm. like i remember um, someone even telling a story used to tell a joke where like most girls will tell you oh you know do you want to come into my house like i have some rice do you take rice, <laughs> you like to eat rice? it's like and the guy's like oh i'm also hungry so no <laughs> <laughs> then that's how it starts for you know you're eating the rice then next thing you know slowly things gravitate and before you know it builds up like i remember i was talking to someone and you know she was telling me about how she went um i think she went out like a to like a party with just in case she's watching, I want to tell her give the food. <laughs> 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 so she was telling me about how you know she went to this party, this guy. I said, Okay, no problem, sit up the one. We went to the party, mm. and she said, Oh, after that, you know, they went to his place to watch a movie. And I was like, Okay, and she said she stayed over. So I was like, Okay, so is that all that happened? I said, Do you think like I'm, I'm five minutes <laughs> or something? So you watched TV, and that was it. So, um, and I was saying to her that, Okay maybe the guy 
because it takes you can't to go from the party to wherever his house is i'm sure you have to get a taxi or something mm -hmm. at least between that time you could have made the decision that you know something's about to happen at him. so i think definitely the girls are as involved mm -hmm. just as the guys because you could have made the sense that you know i know what's going to happen yeah. but for all we know she could have you know, said let's go back to your place yeah. or something like that or maybe she's just waiting for him. She's yeah, waiting for him to say, so it's like, let's go. Yes, please. No problem. It's like, no arguments. You know, our pastor was sharing a story during, um, I think one of my favorite sermons about how uh, sweet influences of the Holy Spirit. And he was sharing a story about how a girl, in, a guy went to visit a girl and the girl started play, playing in the background, then she was in love with you. Mm. And, hey. oh yeah. <laughs> so, I was like, this is dangerous. I was playing in the background, the girl starts talking about how she doesn't like to, I don't really like talking about these things. She starts talking about sex and she starts saying she doesn't like talking about these things really. And she goes on. So I'm, and the background music is already, you know, mm -hmm. seductive. Mm -hmm. And she starts bringing the topic up and leading him in a certain train of thought. So it's not that, and he even continues to say that she was influencing him and sort of directing him in a certain direction without even knowing that this is what the girl is doing mm. and i really like to think that because i don't know i would like to think girls girls are really smart mm. like they could they can tell a lot of things maybe it may not show but they can really tell a lot of things so i think that as a girl especially if you are dealing with the issue of fornication you if you you probably be honest you can admit to yourself that a lot of the time that it happened you knew that it was leading there mm -hmm. and you at a point had a certain level of control to stop it mm -hmm. but you didn't stop it in time mm -hmm. so i think that that realization that consciousness to know that oh yeah maybe i should stop here because like, like you said mm -hmm. in that whole ride all the way she could have easily <laughs> said that so, yes she could well, the bible says that in proverbs it says that uh, a prudent man foreseeth evil mm. and afar off um, and hideth himself, mm. but the simple passes on and is punished. Yeah. So both the fool and the wise person both see the evil ahead. Because mm. so the Bible doesn't say only the wise person sees, mm. but they both see it. But the difference yeah. is that they take a decision. Mm. They, they didn't just fall and take yeah. a vacation. Mm. Mm. It's, it's a series of steps. Mm. Yeah. I can't just be sitting here and then in the next moment I teleport to <laughs> you know, it, it takes a lot of lies. It takes like, oh, guys, I have to go. Mm -hmm. Why do you have to go? Then these type of lies. Then it's like it takes mm -hmm. money. I have to pay for an Uber. I have to pay this, pay some gas. I and mean, it takes a lot. So mm -hmm. I think mean, both parties, two can't work together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they both do. And I mean, I think what I get from it is you, you have to know that a lot of things happen. Mm -hmm. But know that at the end of it, your soul is destroyed. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you, you've got to be careful. Mm -hmm. if, in the end of the day, you are being harmed. Yeah. It's not somebody being harmed. Because um, the first point that Anira gave was that um, it's disobedience to God. Yeah. You can say, okay, I've disobeyed God. He's heartbroken. Okay, yeah. But at the end of the day, it comes back and you also harm yourself. And um, I think he said that it harms your soul. Yeah. And from my understanding of soul, it's your emotions, your feelings, your mind, your intellect and so on. That's what the soul is. And it reminds me of um, somebody who... Um, was was about some years ago in my church and um, I just remember I, I know she was heavily involved in fornication and mm -hmm. when I just used to look at her and look at her face all I could see was her soul is troubled mm -hmm. I could see that she's affected mm -hmm. deeply by the fornication and it's nothing that um, I mean you could have explained it wasn't like she was ill or mm -hmm. she was unhealthy or anything but you could see that her soul was affected by the fornication. Yeah, then also she was affected to the point where she couldn't stop, even though she knew she was affected, mm. she couldn't stop. So I think that's a very important point that you've given that mm. it affects your soul, mm. not just anyone else, but it's yourself. And, and like I said, that's self-harm. That's self-harm self and that's, that's really sad yeah. to, to harm yourself. I don't want to say it's next to madness because and the, the madman of Gadara yeah. was cutting himself yeah. and screaming. but he was crying and screaming yeah. but he was still cutting himself that's yeah. self-harm yeah. another form of self-harm comes in the form of fornication yeah. where you are harming yourself but you're continuing yeah.
Father, sister, stop mm -hmm. harming yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stop harming yourself. Father, Let's stop the fornication. He's saying that stop harming yourself. I'm just now thinking that someone is struggling with fornication and they probably try to stop, but they find themselves continuously going back to the act of fornication. Well, I think I think Eliola mentioned that he's going to teach us how to solve. Yeah, so we'll get there. I think we'll get there. So I'm also waiting for that. <laughs> yeah. how, how do we solve it? Yes, okay, so you get there. Absolutely. That's why you shouldn't leave yet. Yeah, yeah. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. And actually, at this point, um, um, I just want to encourage you to share the link with somebody. Yeah, yeah. Well, they may have missed it. A couple of points that have happened mm -hmm. already, mm -hmm. but you will be surprised how somebody's life can be affected yeah. from this point. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm speaking prophetically, somebody is going to be yeah. changed or yeah. let's say delivered from their fornication Amen. and from the points that are about to come up. Yes. So do your part, do your part by sharing the link mm -hmm. with somebody, and you don't actually know who it is going to be. So share the link with a number of people mm -hmm. so that it reaches the person that God wants to touch today. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, um, so yeah, um, I think even what you were saying at the end um, just even brought me to the next point of um, one of the things that fornication brings. So that's even the next point. Fornication also brings sickness. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, so even how we're talking about affecting yourself, I realized from even what you said, it's like it's self-harm. And you know, like it's very, I feel like people who fornicate, you physically know you are, like it's not even like somebody has to tell you. Yeah. You yourself know you're doing yeah. yourself. <laughs> like you can defend the fornication as much as you want, yeah. but you can see yourself that this affects me one way or another. And one of the ways it does is with the sicknesses. A lot of people now have what different diseases, mm -hmm. things now that they've gotten from even just fornicating, whether it's hepatitis, AIDS, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Now people have that and now, Maybe you're in the situation where you even want to get married, mm -hmm. but it's like everybody you tell or you've gone in a relationship with, and at a point you bring it up that, oh, by the way, I have this, backs out. Now it's like that thing that you've done, which is the fornication or whatever, it's like now it's, it's put such a strong block mm -hmm. on whatever, like your future just going forward. Mm -hmm. And for even most people, like maybe you get a husband that says yes, but now it affects your children, going on and on and on it's like different wow. problems that is so far it, it just it just goes on and on. it's like why do you have to put yourself through something that it, it just destroys your entire life so another thing that it brings is sicknesses so people receive stds all these different things sexually transmitted diseases you can tell yourself that your condom will prevent it Maybe you pull out into, I don't know what your method is. Everybody has different, <laughs> many, different, many different methods. Huh? Yeah. And they say to themselves, like, I know a guy who said to me that I can never get it. And I was looking at him and he said, I can never get it. Oh, <laughs> I said, Yo, yeah. I'm still waiting for it. Yeah. <laughs> I've told him that, you know what, the way you're talking, you should That's just get it. So, yeah. 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 He said, he said, he said confidently, me it will never happen to me. Each. And I was, I was shocked. I said, wow, yes. I really believe they have strategies. Yeah. And it's one of the things that comes and it just messes up your entire life going forward. Mm -hmm. Because even now, let's say it comes to a point where you say, I want to be delivered and saved. I want to be free. I'm not going back to this again great but now it's like unless some magical miracle happens yeah. that thing is still there yeah. which even it's like if somebody came to me it's like if i was beloved dozing somebody and she said hey look by the way i have eight like i'm sorry but <laughs> i'm a christian but even yeah. me like still, I know, still yeah. like yeah. I, I have to i know you're saying that i know you're changed but like you say you have Eights? Wow. Mm. Oh man. I love the word. Eights. Eights. Why quite a number for itself? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, yes. In Southern Africa, the, the STDs are quite high. Mm. And one of the most prevalent ones is HIV and AIDS. Mm. So because of that, you even notice that people don't really get married early. Mm. And by the time they think that they are ready to get married, the number of illnesses that they've encountered even the physically unfit part of it makes it even harder for them to get married. Mm. And it's like a real thing. Probably an average person in, the, in Southern Africa has an STD. Mm. And if you notice even um, the hospitals, they can run out of ARVs. Mm. ARV is the, the treatment for AIDS. Mm. So they, they literally run out of it. Wow. Because it's a serious thing, and it may look like, oh, like your parents, I won't get it, could, I could never get it. Mm -hmm. I don't think every single person that has AIDS plans to have AIDS. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. I don't think they plant any of those seeds. So, no, 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 nobody plans to have it, but that, that's that's the consequence of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you one interesting fact. You know, many, many, many years ago, I used to work for. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> many, many, many years ago, I used to work um, as a sexual health peer educator. What? Wow. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, so I used to um, educate people. Yeah, yeah. Please educate us. I'm educate. Educate. I'm sitting up. I'm sitting up. Yes, yes. You, <laughs> I, I used to educate people on sexual health and all those things. Wow. And, you know, I mean, I used to see people up person after person mm-hmm. and coming to do all sorts of tests. So, I mean, you say Southern Africa, mm-hmm. this has happened, but you'd be surprised it's, it's mm. prevalent in many, many places. Mm-hmm. Oh other parts of Africa, in, in Europe, in the Americas, in Asia. You know, some, some of these places are wild up, just that the data is in... Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's private data. Yeah, it's, well, they, they don't have the means to collect proper data yeah. and stuff. And it's not everybody who goes through these things who reports it. So yeah. I know, I mean, many of you are watching all over the world. And, and it's, it's true what she's saying, but it's true for so many places. Yeah. There are so many people with so many diseases and so on and sicknesses and so on. And you know, everything that Eniola and everything that has been discussed so far um, does not discount Mm -hmm. the reality Mm -hmm. and the truth that the sex was good. (laughs) That's not what I was expecting. Sex is nice. It's nice. It was great. The climax felt good. The orgasm was orgasmic out of this world, in, in <laughs> this world yes. it doesn't cancel all those things mm. do not think that um bad sex results in all these mm. things we are saying mm. but good sex, mm. sex is, is fine mm. <laughs> look i'll tell i'll tell you for free that uh, all the things that have been spoken about mm. so far including the sicknesses including mm-hmm. the damaging of the soul including the dis- disobedience of god they are all consequences of both good sex mm. mm-hmm. and bad sex. Mm. Oh. Truly. So you, you may have had a fantastic three minutes. Mm. Oh. Or, three minutes for your soul. Let's see. Well, like I said, um, exchange for your soul. Mm. Do, do not exchange three minutes, <laughs> three minutes for your soul. <laughs> you get it. I mean, it, it may have been a fantastic, maybe maybe you are the one hour type, maybe you are the two hours, I don't know, yeah. you're in your own personal, however, whatever. However it goes for you, look, <laughs> it, it's, it's not worth yeah. all these things. Mm. And, and I want to encourage you not to be proud, mm. like um, the person who spoke to Eniola, to say that, you know, this will not happen to me. Yeah. No. We believe in proclamations, especially those who are Christians. Yes. We believe in saying, God forbid, yeah. or over my dead body, as people say, mm. or the, the Lord, or, yeah, all, all these things that people do, you know. I yeah. in Jesus. We, they are, I rejected in Jesus' name. Yes, we also believe in all those rejections mm. and so on, however, you know. There's plain and simple word, it's also a, a deliverance. It's mm. not just, and God forbid, that delivers. Yeah. Yeah. The word of God delivers too. Mm-hmm. And the word of God is coming to us today that mm-hmm. fornication should not even be once. Yeah, now true. there's something that um, my flow church pastor says. Mm-hmm. I mean, he says it's about different things and different topics that always amazes me and gets me thinking. He always says that you never know mm-hmm. which one mm-hmm. or if you'll be the person mm-hmm. who some you something bad comes out of what you do you? Mm. now this can happen for example if you smoke weed mm-hmm. some people smoke weed for 10 years mm. and they are seemingly okay mm. other people smoke weed once in their life and they become mad yeah. you can never know if you be that you one <laughs> there's only one way to find out there's only one way to find out and I'll find you if you want to take the risk, take the risk. <laughs> look in fornication is the same yeah mm. You may not feel because you cannot feel HIV mm. in the channel of a vagina. Mm. You cannot tell when you enter. Is that one? Is there a HIV? Is there HIV here? You, can, you cannot. You cannot tell um, um, gonorrhea mm. by 
the person's perfume on the person's face, and then nobody has an STDs written on their body. A warning sign. A warning sign. You, 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 you cannot see. Nobody sends a message that when you come over to my house, mm. I'm, I'm preparing um, to destroy your soul. Mm. <laughs> nobody right. says that. You know, all these things. Yes, you wouldn't go that way. No, that that's the mystery of fornication. Mm. So much goes wrong that you cannot see clearly yeah that's why and i believe that's the wisdom because you know okay if you ask me ask me honestly mm. that what is my personal opinion yeah on sleeping with somebody outside marriage mm -hmm. personally that's my personal and um, human human opinion, <laughs> human opinion. i didn't say that as a human being i may mean, say that oh. okay well, yeah i mean it makes sense mm. what's because the what's the issue because when you don't have um, food at home, mm -hmm. you can go to visit a friend for some mm -hmm. food mm -hmm. or something. Even I mean, we know of the story in the Bible that a um, person didn't have bread, so he went to knock mm -hmm. on somebody's head because of the same opportunity. The person mm -hmm. also gave them bread. Mm -hmm. that, that that may be that may be my um, reasoning. Yeah. Or makes makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it maybe it makes sense, or yeah. maybe you know, um, um. If we are together and we are friends and we are communing, mm. we can commune in different ways and sex will be another way of communing. Maybe that that may be my understanding, but you see that I, I may not have good understanding or the kind of understanding that God has. Mm. And God has a higher level. That's why the Bible says his, his ways are not our ways, neither are his thoughts are thoughts. And I think it's because it's not that he has different ways and different thoughts. Mm. It's that he has superior ways and yeah. that he has superior thoughts mm. that we cannot even fathom. Yeah. That's why his important word to us is just obey. Yeah. Because you cannot understand, so just obey. So when he says, he, first of all, he said, no fornication. Yeah. But then he went a step forward to say that not even once. Mm. There must be a reason. Mm. Yeah. There must be a reason why he says not even once. Because most sins, like it says, if a righteous man falls down once, mm. yeah. get up. Or well, he says seven yeah. times. Yeah. Yes, but for the case, he says, don't even fall once. Yes. Wow. Don't even fall once. There must be a reason. And I, I don't know the reason. Yeah, I'm not about to share a revelation on the reason. Yeah. I don't know what the reason is. But the fact that he said it, yeah, it, we should believe. Raises an alarm. It raises an alarm, yeah. and I mean, based on what all the things that you guys say right now, I mean, those are quite alarming. Mm -hmm. But I can also agree that in the moment when you're in your feelings and you know you yeah. see her or you see him mm -hmm. and the way she looks, or the way he looks, mm -hmm. and everything, or the way he smells, or the way she smells. Uh, see, now it's another introduction. It's another exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Smells like smells like exactly, or the way he tastes, or she tastes. I mean, I don't know why you taste. Whatever it is, you see, whatever it is, you know, despite all those things, mm. you know, they are dangerous, mm. and God has said so. It's in our interest, yeah. not anybody's interest, yeah. your own interest, my own interest, mm. to avoid. Mm. That's why all these words, the Bible says, avoid fornication. Mm -hmm. yeah. It says that let no ones be said that mm -hmm. I don't think this is by accident. Mm -hmm. yeah, there are reasons. Please, please. In one of these books, I don't I can't remember which one, but he says one of the highest levels of obedience is obeying without understanding. That's right. Mm -hmm. Like you don't need to understand to obey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like although all these reasons, it's true. You are destroying yourself, destroying your soul. You are disobeying God, but obey. You don't need to understand why you should not have this three minute of pleasure yeah. inside marriage. You don't need to understand. Well, that, that's the truth because you see, like when I see my my daughter, for example, and then um, I can see she's going for ten seconds of pleasure oh. at the plug <laughs> <laughs> because she wants to taste. Yeah, with them. I mean, it might be nice. Yeah. 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 But you see, my 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 ways and my thinking is superior to hers, yes. and I don't explain to her because she doesn't understand. Yeah. So I just tell her that stop. Yeah, and I move her when I have to. Yeah. And I say, don't even never, which is let it not once. Yeah, yeah. never touch the thing again. Wow. And I leave it. It's the same way that God also does with us. We can't understand if he explains why you shouldn't put a key to us. We, we can never understand. Actually, that's the Bible even says, um, it says clearly what you just said. Yeah. That faith, what understanding comes before Please. believing. Um, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3 says, 
now through faith mm -hmm. we understand mm -hmm. so faith actually comes before so believe the understanding mm -hmm. because in retrospect maybe when you go back or you look back like when your daughter grows up yeah she's like ah but at the moment you will never you know, you get to understand. when that naked body is in front of you you can never understand, you understand. it paralyzes you, it paralyzes you. <laughs> you know, but there's no more thinking at that point but in the world it's actually the reverse yeah. Yeah. you have to understand before you believe that's right it's yeah. like explain to me why like i need reasons yeah i have to have reasons why otherwise i'm going to do what i want to do and if that's like your disposition towards fornication that it's like and you need to know and you need to understand all that what you're saying makes sense but i still think it, it shows a sign of worldliness mm -hmm. that you know there's an absence of faith yeah. but there's a presence of like i need to understand i need to understand at a point christianity doesn't mm. it doesn't it's no longer about understanding yeah but it's just about faith faith, faith. yeah powerful yeah. that faith yeah that's like your real role. Yeah, and I think what you're saying about faith is really serious because I, I, I did, it just occurred to me, and I feel like some people have a mind where they say, "But if God knew that fornication is supposed to be wrong, I don't know why, where, where, yeah, why where, how I was thinking. Thing. Like, then why do I have yeah. this feeling? What's the, why have you given me this feeling? Yeah. Then why is it that at this age I start having erections? Yeah. What's the point? Right. So you feel like maybe God is unfair, but no, he's God just, me. yeah, God set me up. Like, <laughs> why do you do this to me? Then if you know that this is the case, but it's just it's, it's just the case yeah. of having faith that okay, at least until marriage, you have the feeling now. Not much we can do. But just believe in that if God has said, don't do this at this time, then it's just the case. Just so, so is it wrong? Like, you're not having fornication, but you still have those feelings. Mm -hmm. So it's like you just, you know, through masturbation, because it's not fornication. Yeah, so that's the It's a different Haitian. It's a yeah. different Haitian. It's, it's, it's not that same Haitian. Mm -hmm. So it's like if I watch porn, if I masturbate, mm -hmm. like, is it an issue? Oh, you're yeah, doing that is also an issue because. At, at least uh, anyway when you're masturbating if anything you're masturbating with a thought mm -hmm. even if you don't believe masturbation is wrong you're, mas you're masturbating at least for me i remember thinking one time i was like oh you know when you have to do like a sperm test mm -hmm. you have to masturbate right <laughs> 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 is this to a sin? i mean I'm, it's a health check <laughs> Yeah. So wait, yeah. how do you think? Anyway, how do you? Yeah, for the balls, <laughs> I'll never let you put a syringe. <laughs> okay, I'll count. So, it's okay, I'm gonna be out fake. My sperm is fine. <laughs> no, 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 it's true. So like, I was with you. Like, so it, 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 is, it, is it wrong? So I'm assuming some people also have that mindset. Only yeah. surprised, but at least when you masturbate, you masturbate with a thought. And Jesus Christ clearly says that. Even if you think mm -hmm. or look at a woman lustfully, mm -hmm. it's the same as committing fornication. So, like, even if you don't believe going back and forth is a sin, but you, like, unless you can do it without thinking, yeah. <laughs> you're talking about going back and forth. Yes, yeah, like, going back and forth. Oh, I've never heard that term. <laughs> you learn every day. You learn every day. No, so, but it's true. I mean, the scripture you mentioned earlier is that all um, fornication and uncleanness, mm -hmm. and I mean. You know, masturbation is unclean, unclean. Yeah. because after you're done, look at your hand. Your hands are clean. <laughs> your hands are not clean. So I think that's a clear scripture right there. Well, that's 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 a good one, and that's a good point that you said about that verse. Because you know, I think the thing about fornication, mm -hmm. um, in life and in Christianity, we have a lot of technicians. Mm -hmm. When I say technicians, okay, people who are technical. I like this. Okay, I like this. Technical <laughs> about things. Did the Bible say this? Yes. So, I mean, in God's infinite wisdom, yes. and if I was God, I would have said all fornication mm. and avoid and all of those things. Yeah. You know, that's what I would have said. Yeah. But God knows about yeah. his children who are spiritual technicians. Yeah. Yes. So, he didn't just end with fornication. Mm. He said an uncleanness mm. yes. to yeah. add. Because we all know that there are things that are not sexual intercourse. Yeah. Mm. Yes. In, you know, but they are, of course, uh, of course, they are course. Yes. Course. Yes. There are other courses involving so many yes. other things that are not technically uh, fornication. Yes. So in his infinite 
wisdom and decided to say fornication and all uncleanness to put it there together so that all the things that you know about yes. yeah, yeah. that are not sexual intercourse mm -hmm. yeah. but you know uh, it's a sin, mm -hmm. a sexual sin, yeah. are all inclusive in it. And abstain yeah. from yeah. all appearance of being oh, full. Exactly. If it appears you in 2024, maybe they didn't do it back then. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you think, ah, God, God is in you. Yeah. <laughs> so when, when it comes, when it comes more inclusive. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's true, it's wonderful. So, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm saying this because mm -hmm. I know some technicians are watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, is it righteous to continue to masturbate? Is it righteous? Right. Is it righteous? What is righteous? Righteous is right. Mm. And if we go into masturbation, we are going into another, another whatever. Mm. But I mean, if it's righteous, I mean, I think um, Anira's explanation was quite yeah, yeah. good so, in yeah. the sense that it comes with the thoughts. Mm. The thoughts with the Bible clearly um, defines as um, equal to fornication. Mm. Yeah. Yes. But then there's also the side of. Um, this reality of if you have to do something medical mm -hmm. and so on then and it includes masturbation mm -hmm. then you have to do it is it really is it um so unclean great is it not unclean? Great yeah i mean it's something it's something medical that has to be done just like a lot of things like you can also say that and um, I mean, I don't want to go into yeah, saying yeah, anything for yeah, people. Yeah, but to answer the question, it's, 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 it's not right. Yeah, it's not right. Yeah, so yeah. It's only the technicians who yeah, say it's, it's not right. right. <laughs> yeah, that's why what you're a psychologist. Yeah, it's, 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 it's not, not righteous. righteous. Yeah. It's not righteous, yeah. yeah. It's not, keep away from it. Oh, okay. yeah. Don't do it. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah beautiful topic. Yeah, yeah. All, all uncleanness. All uncleanness. All yes, for all those. And yeah, I don't know, you want me to say it in the camera. You want yeah, me to say, yeah. say the different But you know the things. Mm. They know all the things. All the things that include fingers, all things yeah. that include yeah. hands, mm. mm. mouth, mm. mm. gadgets, mm. gadgets, mm. gadgets, mm. gadgets mm. Ver mm. virtuals, mm. Whatever, whatever it is. They are, so they are all part of it. Mm. Yeah, so avoid all those things because all those things also do affect. Yeah. Yeah. And Mm. Like like if, like and and you all said. But you won't give us just one key on how we can. Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting okay, there. okay. Shoot. So me, let me just because I feel like we're running out of time. So let me just join everything together. Okay. Right. Yeah, so okay. even another way. I mean, we've talked about it, but I wanted to also mention another way that you know fornication also affects you is that you also make blood covenants mm. with people. I think that's also another that's the one. one. That's, that's really one. Another, that's the one. No, thank you. You can't do yeah, that. That's another. Yeah. 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 That one speaks for itself. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. really a deep one. So that's if you don't understand, then uh, mm. be on your way. Like your yeah. So because based when you when a woman has sex for the first time, she bleeds. I said, "Hey, man, I'm going to hang you." I will say. Hey, 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 I don't have it, so Did I you know. Know. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it leads them, you know, so it's basically like a covenant that you have. It's like this two have now become one. Mm -hmm. So like when you have sex with so many different people, now your soul is tied to yeah, so, many, so different. many different people. It's like, then you find out like, why are you oriented this way? Why are you like this? What is this? What is that? Mm -hmm. And already, whether you believe it or not, yeah. th there's stuff like witches. Before you know it, you've slept. Like you hear so many different stories. This, this guy brought this, yeah, this guy brought this woman to his house. Then you just said to a fish after. Yeah. yeah. Interesting story. Someone back back in the south. I think it's from okay, a country. Mm -hmm. So the the guy had gone to have sex with a lady, and he didn't know her from anywhere. He picked up her up randomly somewhere, mm -hmm. and he had sex with her, and then maggots. You have maggots. Uh -huh. You know maggots, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so as he was having sex with the other ends, maggots started coming out of her, you know, face. Yes. Yes. That's okay, Louis. I don't know. So they started coming out. So maggots were coming out everywhere and he was never able to recover. So if she how, was trending it was a very popular trending thing. Wow. Now since then it's it's as though all the witchcraft that was connected to the lady, mm -hmm. she transferred them to this guy. Mm -hmm. So they eventually started coming out and he was never the same again. Wow. He started to produce my guts. He started to produce my guts. Whoa, I mean that that's a that's a scary movie, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Instead of just 
there's signs of about COVID nineteen in the even, even the world acknowledges how much of a sacred bond um, sex is outside of the Bible. Because if you marry and then you haven't had sex mm -hmm. and you haven't what they call consummated the marriage, then you can have the marriage annul mm -hmm. because it's like we haven't had sex. So the world actually acknowledges how significant and sex is of a bond and it's like there's there's no there's no way that you can be closer to a person mm -hmm. unless the world acknowledges that when it comes to marriage then it means their mind actually knows how wild sex is mm -hmm. and so to add yeah. blood in these type of things my friend uh, it's quite serious. Yeah, it's very yeah. so i think yeah let's just move <laughs> forward yeah. 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 Blood Definitely. So I mean, yeah. So another thing that that um, fornication also does, just to wrap it all together, is also in the case of children, people start to have unwanted children. Um, you know, you have children who maybe just grow up and just become messed up people in society. These these are usually people that are product of fornication. Yeah, it's yeah. like they feel rejection. Maybe my mother didn't want me. My father, I don't know where my father is because the guy just had a one night stand with yeah, this woman. Yes. And you start to before you know, you have so many children in the world who are just I don't know. They just take decisions with life that you don't understand. They feel rejected. They start to go in wrong directions. Some become robbers. Some even decide, you know, I'm better off as a prostitute because like this is just how it is. So. So people start to make those decisions so that's another thing that fornication does we that's really that's yeah yeah because that made me think about the child in yeah. their life it reminds me of a song quite frankly because my siblings and i always used to we memorize that i don't know if it's a rap or a song my mom gave me up when i was four years so she <laughs> struck my body but she killed my soul hey. oh, yeah. sleeping in the back seat i've got the rest of the way <laughs> but my flesh is weak oh. let me speak i never had a chance to dream 12 years old and find the love in dirty magazines. Whoa, Miss September, you remember? I bought you twice. Uh, now I'm 30 plus and still paying the price. Whoa. Had a sister that I barely knew. Kind of got separated by the age of two. Same mama, different dad. It's hard to fake it. I saw my daddy. I saw my daddy beat my sister in the tub naked. Hey. Um, can we leave the demons in the man's mind? Mm. He went to jail with. Rape charges now is doing time. And so I don't know. I think it's a deep man. Deep, no, deep story. Like, yeah. a, and I mean that, that that whole story and so on is based on the fact that I mean he came he was an unborn um, unwanted child. Mm. And I mean like these things we're talking about mm. are not things that you're thinking about when you are jumping. Mm. That's that's the scary part. Yeah. Mm. When you're screaming, yes, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't come to mind. It doesn't it come to mind. It doesn't come to mind. Whereas later on in life, somebody's going to be writing a whole oh. deep song, song yes. about the sufferings that, that they're going to go. Look, be be wise and be mature. Mm. I think why God is telling us to keep away from fornication is because of deep consequences, yeah. long term yeah. consequences yeah. like these yeah. things that we're long talking about. Yeah. 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 Okay, so it's time. Yeah. Oh no, I think it's a good opportunity for us to give an offering. I yeah, think. Yeah, uh, it is. It is. You probably should have given an offering earlier, but it, as you as you can tell, the topic has been quite, you know, it's hot. It's, it's been hot mm. and so on. But you know, as the topic has been hot, mm. make sure your offering is also hot. Mm. Yes. Okay, so take out something good, Five something five. impressive. Yes. To God. Beautiful. Not to anybody. Something special. Something that's gonna, you know, touch God's heart. Yeah. But if you take out, you know the details already, but they're on the screen right now. Um wherever you are, wherever you're giving from, you can give to this number. It works. It works using any of the um money transfer apps. You can send directly to this number. The flowing meal number um today and right now and i want to remind you that whenever you are watching this i know some of you have watched this a little later um the offering number still works so continue to give give a good offering unto the lord and i believe that you will be blessed mm. all right now i mean uh, i'm gonna go back to eniola because yeah. at the start of it he mentioned he said that he had ways mm. to mm. 
to help us and i don't know if you said avoid or to avoid, to avoid fornication mm -hmm. and i think that's the question that's on everybody's yeah. heart and mind and yeah. um, asati asked mm -hmm. in the middle of that discussion so how because mm -hmm. i mean the, the truth is that we are all affected yeah. um, and i think if you're at home and you're thinking that oh but you know first of all i'm a virgin mm -hmm. or secondly um since i got married i've never had sex with anybody outside my marriage um, always remember that the verse he he also shared with us, which said that um, whenever you even think or look at mm -hmm. somebody mm -hmm. or think about, it, you've already done this in your heart, mm -hmm. which means that you are also you've also committed fornication, and that means mm -hmm. don't lie. That you you've been you've you've been in that situation. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's watching who says that they you've mm -hmm. never looked at somebody, you've never thought of somebody, honestly, at this point, mm -hmm. honestly. Let's be serious. Let's be serious. Let's just tell the truth. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, and you know, what we all need is to know how to avoid it. How to avoid it. Help us. So yeah, I mean, like we've been talking about, it's one thing to know. Okay, now I know how I know how this affects me. Now I need to stop. And there are two things. There is basically physical steps to avoiding fornication and there's also spiritual steps okay. that you can take as well so you can just go for the physical steps very quickly mm -hmm. one of the first ones um, is not is basically not going into um what's it called not having untimely relationships mm -hmm. that's the first one because usually when you say you know you want to go into the relationship you want to have this girlfriend or boyfriend I mean, you spend a lot of time together. What it ends up leading to is fornication in the end. And the Bible already tells us that, you know, um, for everything, there's a season, there's a time. Right. And you have to know that, you know, at a certain age um, or even a certain period in your life, it's not even time for a relationship. Saying you want to be in a relationship doesn't, doesn't mean anything because um, usually it's, aside from so many other situations, it's one of the ways that opens a door to fornication. Mm -hmm when you have a relationship with a person before you know it, that's the next thing you're talking about. Um, or your friends start asking you, like, you hit it yet. Yeah. It's like, well, what's the, what's the, it's a, because the way the world is now, what's the, like when you're in a relationship with someone, it's not just to go and get ice cream or, no, or eat or anything. It's like, have sex. Like, yeah. Have you done that? If you've not done that, then you're not in a relationship. relationship. Yeah. So then the best thing to do is just no untimely relationships. Yeah. Maybe you may seem like, and you're not with the crowd or you're not in what everybody is doing mm -hmm. and you're the guy who's not in a relationship everybody else has a girlfriend a boyfriend you are lonely or maybe as a girl you feel like maybe all your friends are telling you that nobody likes you that's why you're not in a relationship you're ugly mm -hmm. that's why you're not whatever it is that people are saying mm -hmm. just remember this one thing even some people feel like, well, I'll convince the guy to not sleep with me. Look. <laughs> no, no, it's mine. Look. <laughs> Forget about convincing him. Just no untimely relationships. That's true. I mean, I, I, I agree with that because, I mean, even when I think about myself, um, I remember I mean, I finally got saved. Yeah. And I thought that, you know, okay, I've taken girlfriends and all of that out of my life. But now I was saved and I started to, I felt that, okay, at least if I don't like have a girlfriend or I'm not in a relationship in the world, yeah. but if I find somebody in the church, mm. that that at least that's good. Yeah. Because at least in the church. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember um I think I was I, I must have been in uni. Mm. I don't know, maybe uni or before uni or something like that. And there was it was a girl that I liked in the church. And I mean I fell I fell in love with this girl. Wow. I mean, the truth is that I still had so many years mm. before I could practically marry her. Mm. But I mean, I, I, I loved her with all my heart. Mm. I truly did. And then, um, and there was nothing wrong with her. Mm. Everything was right with her. Everything was cool. Everything was good. Um, she was a Christian. She was saved. Serious and everything. And I mean, I was too. Yeah. And so on. So surely, that's it much made in heaven yeah. but i mean the word that you just used now is important and timely mm -hmm. so I, I i was i don't know if i wanted to be in a relationship or i was in a relationship with her mm -hmm. 
but it, I guess it was untimely mm -hmm. because I couldn't marry her yeah. anytime soon. So now the time or the distance between now mm -hmm. at the time yeah. and when I could marry her was long. Yeah. So I, and I, I mean, I'll be honest with you, I, I couldn't handle it inside me. Yeah. I, I mean, I think she was okay, yeah. but I mean, the what I was yeah, feeling. Yeah, it's power. When can I? Yes, I mean, you know? Yeah, and I mean, I, so I mean, all I'm saying is that I understand yeah. untimely relationship because it's not about the something wrong with the person, is the person right, yeah. and all of that. It's the timing, mm -hmm. the time of it. There, I can confirm with you, there was nothing wrong with her. Mm -hmm. She was born again. She still is still today. Yeah. And everything. And I was born again. Believe it or not, I still am until today. Yeah. And everything. I was in the church, she was in the church. We all still are today. But the timing mm. of the relationship was not good. Yeah. And because of that, the kind of feelings and pressure that I was under, I mean I had to I had to jump out of that mm. relationship because there was no way I was going to survive. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So I understand what you're yeah. saying that untimely relationships will lead to fornication. Oh, and when I say that I couldn't handle it, what I mean is that and all that was on my mind was fornication. And when I say Oh, that's mine. I don't think anybody thinks that oh, I want to fornicate. Yeah. That's what it is. Everybody's thinking that you know I, I want to have sex. I want yeah. to express myself. That's I right. want to. I just want to love the person. I want yeah. to. You know that's what it is. Nobody's thinking I want to fornicate. Yeah. Yeah. Things yeah. like that. You want to see that the the divine you give it. Sugar cookies, so that you make yourself. Yes, I, I want to make love. Yeah. Mm. I want to love my neighbor. That's <laughs> myself. <laughs> God has love. God has love. Yes, yes. <laughs> exactly. And whatever you do to the least of these, you know. <laughs> try, try, try. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you see, these are technicians. <laughs> these are technician comments, <laughs> technical comments. Like but yes, it's, it's true. An untimely relationship does lead to fornication. Mm -hmm. that, and, and you can say everything that you know, no, we're just friends or we're just in a relationship or we are going to marry, mm -hmm. but we want to marry or are married because a lot of people who have ended up in fornication mm -hmm. have said that we are going to marry anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. And many of them have not ended up marrying. Exactly. So it's true. Untimely relationships, if we can avoid an untimely relationship, yeah. you can avoid fornication. Yeah. And I remember, I mean, I was able to avoid fornication with this friend of mine who I was in love with yeah. because I was able to not avoid the relationship initially. But when it got to the time that I had to jump out, I, I just had to. I, I jumped out and it, it saved me. I the scripture I always had when it came to that in my mind is um, there's an Ecclesiastes chapter 3 I think mm -hmm. when it says to, to everything there's a time and a season mm -hmm. then it goes on to say that there's a time to embrace and then there's a time to refrain from embracing mm -hmm. so when the time to embrace comes by the grace of God you can embrace it. Hold on tight. Hold on tight. That's what Solomon also said that do not awaken. Uh, uh, wait before it's time. Before it's time. Yeah. When it's woken up, take a smoke. I don't think it goes back to sleep. A week for life. Uh, so, that's right. The Bible is full of so many keys. Yeah. Timing. The timing of your relationship is key to your ability to abstain from fornication. Beautiful, and you're blessing us. You're saying to somebody, I know. Yes. Because some, somebody's actually in a relationship. Yes, in a relationship. I tell yeah. 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 you. Yeah. And they're trying to decide. There's a 17 year Yeah. And it's not that you're, it's wrong to be yeah. whatever, but it's just the time. Yeah. And like me, because I think I was actually 17 when I started having these feelings. Yeah, it's really prophetic. And just the practically the time between mm. when I could marry, marry her and now, it's, it's not humanly possible. It was not humanly possible for me. I mean, different people have different control levels, and maybe for you, you have um, endurance of self control. <laughs> but for me, it was it never going to happen. It wasn't yeah. going to happen. And I believe it's the same for you, actually. Yeah. You know, I wanted to get married at the age of 19. Mm. <laughs> My friends used to be like, okay, when I went straight out of high school, I had this. Thing that I could marry in university, and I don't know, I'm here now. <laughs> <laughs> well, in case you don't know, <laughs> she finished university a long time, <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> Which just means that I'm telling you, relationships like it's generally going to lead you there. You yeah. may not even, it, it's like a sure thing mm -hmm. when it's untimely, it will lead you there. That's right. Mm. 
That's right. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah like, Help us some more. Keep helping us. So the next step that you have to now consider is that you must only have relationships onto marriage. Mm -hmm. So if, after considering the time when you do have a relationship, it's whether you ask yourself, do I intend to marry this person mm -hmm. or it's just for vibes. vibes. <laughs> You're just trying it out. Yeah, yeah. just trying it out. Yeah. Yeah. Try it well, it's, all of those things leads to fornication because I feel like with that, the mind is, there's no expectation. Mm -hmm. It's like maybe people are in a relationship, but godly relationship they're saying to themselves you know i'm waiting for my wedding night but mm -hmm. this you know you're not going to marry the person so it's like now you know that you have to do it now mm -hmm. so it just ends up leading to fornication so it's like if you have the mind where you're in a relationship with someone and you know it's not going towards marriage the only thing you think about is that it's like take for example with me myself if i end up in a relationship with somebody i mean it's like to finish the whole relationship we never had sex with men Mm. I made a mistake. <laughs> I gotta go back. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta go back. Oh. So that oh oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> So no, so that's how it is. So yeah. if, if you end up having relationships where you know the whole end result is not marriage, then it only ends up leading to fornication. That would be the only thing that you end up desiring. There's no hope, there's no anticipation. Maybe people talk about okay my wedding night this i'm saving that for myself i want to unwrap my package properly but you mm -hmm. don't have that mm -hmm. you you don't have that expectation because you know that i'm just trying this out for some yeah. time yeah. and at least i know as a guy i don't know about any other guy mm -hmm. like at least if i've been in a relationship with somebody the next thing i'm probably thinking about is am i really going to leave this person if i have it like I don't know what, like, and I'm not going to see what's under the hood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, there must be some benefits. Yeah, there must be some benefits in this. Yeah. 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 No, it's yeah. 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 It doesn't matter. So if you're going to go into a relationship, I think it's important to have the mind of a relationship that's, you know, it's, it's leading to marriage because at least with marriage, when you, when you have sex, you know it's not fornication. Mm -hmm. And even on to the next point with the um, scripture that Joshua was sharing um, about um, there's a time to embrace. Another part that's in connection to that relationship onto marriage is even having relationships that are holy. Mm. So having the mind that I'm in this relationship and it's supposed to be holy. Mm. So meaning that she's not, although we're in a relationship, whether she's my beloved, whatever you title it, we're um, dating, we're courting, whatever it is, you know that there's a time that you're supposed to embrace each other. It's not now. Mm. Um, even uh, I like, um, one of the books about flow church pastor model marriage he has some very nice points at the beginning of the chapter like things you shouldn't do when you're in a relationship it's like she shouldn't sit on your lap you know i don't i don't it's like no she shouldn't sit on your lap don't start fondling with each other say oh i'm just i'm just checking it out like <laughs> <laughs> i'm just trying to see if it's working this, this. there's some things you should just avoid mm. So even when you're in a relationship, it's supposed to be holy. Yeah. Um, so that's another important key because there is a time to embrace. Because you just have to accept the whole idea is that you kind of have to accept that you're a human being. Mm -hmm. And as a human being, man or woman, you have feelings. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of like if you're fasting, you know that you're hungry. So like for me, when I'm fasting, I don't want like food to be in the house. Mm -hmm. Like there's no need to be tempted. You know that you're hungry. You're supposed to be fasting. And then you're going through Instagram looking at fruit, fruit. <laughs> you're not helping yourself at yeah. all. So it's like when you when you get into an untimely relationship, you don't have a mind of a relationship that's supposed to be holy. Naturally, you want it. There's not much you can do about it. You want it. So if you don't set those boundaries, like this is supposed to be a holy relationship. Maybe when we meet each other, we have a third person. We do all of these things. They help because it's like you just have to accept that me. If you leave me here alone, I'm for the kids. Like that's it. It's, there's no. I feel like that's that's one thing that I had to explain to myself, especially with like relating with the opposite sex and stuff like that. Like at a point, I realized that no, I have to set boundaries with girls. Like it's too much. I remember one time I was moving houses, then a girl said to me, like, "Oh, should I help you take it to your new flat?" I said, "No, I'm fine, thank you. I'll move it, even if I have to sweat. I'll move yeah. it. It's fine because like." The next thing you know, she's like, oh wow, this is your new flat day. She starts walking around and she sits down, let me turn on the TV. Before you think one thing leads yeah. to another, then yeah. it's gone. So even just having that mindset, setting those boundaries, no untimely relationships, 
even if you do decide to go into one. And I know there's so many people out there, it's like, okay, so maybe now you found yourself, you're in a relationship, you know you wanted to lead to marriage, but then you found yourself in a situation where, okay, I wanted to marry this person, but I fornicated. No problem, what can you do? It's now a case of setting the boundaries. Um, I don't know if it's spoiled the relationship, I don't know if it hasn't, but I think it's just a case of setting those boundaries. And like I said, our flow church pastor has a really nice, some very good points, model marriage. He gives them clearly the things you should do and should not do. So um, I think those are just the steps. I believe there's one more. Beautiful. I mean, the verse says that um, can, a, can a person or whatever, can a man keep a fire in his bosom and not burn? Yeah. And I think that's what um, Daniela is saying that um, be honest and just tell yourself that if, if this fire is in my bosom, I will burn. Yeah. So because of that, because of that, I won't have a fire near me mm-hmm. or in the bosom. I'll live underwater so that no fire can come around me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You get it? And once you can do that, you, you will not burn. Mm-hmm. You will not burn. Yeah. So keep it away. So those are the physical ones. Beautiful. The next one is the spiritual ones. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the first one for the spiritual ones, um, you said it already, it's just honesty. Mm. Yeah. That's all. It's nothing fantastic, nothing mm. sp- amazing, nothing spooky. It's just honesty. Being honest first with yourself, yeah. then <clears throat> even to opening up to other people and seeking counsel and all of those things, they help. Like the like, uh, uh, Bishop Leo was saying, it's like the fire is already in the bosom. Yeah. You can't do anything, like it's there. You just have to accept that me naturally. Blood goes straight if I that's it, it goes straight direct. Direct, like, and when you accept that and you're honest with yourself, you start to take certain steps. Like, yeah, even like, like some people that that I don't know if it applies to all guys, but there's some I, I think that guys that shouldn't say that this girl is my best friend, I do everything with her. I, I mean, I'll never survive such a thing, so I, I'll be honest with myself that it doesn't work for me. I can't have a girl as a best friend, mm. it doesn't. So, just being honest with yourself knowing that this is how you are, this is how I am. Um, and I think Joshua was also mentioning how you can have sex with so many different people. So some people are at the point where they've slept with so many different girls, all they can think about is tasting new things. Mm-hmm. So just having that honesty, but look, this is me. Mm-hmm. So I can't be in a place alone with a girl. I can't be here alone with a girl. It's like it's quiet, nothing is happening. Like You should know yourself and just walk out. Like Just mm-hmm. don't be there. Save yourself and just be honest and also opening up to other people, seeking help from pastors, counsel and talking about it with friends, you know. And I think at the point, one of the things that I used to do with my friends, like I, we all knew our faults. So if I see this guy with his arm around the girl, I'll take it off. Mm-hmm. I said, look, I, maybe you were not thinking anything. I'm just helping you. That's all. <laughs> you may not be thinking about anything, but it's just support. That's the yeah. case. And it so, comes from the honesty that yeah. you guys that we have with each other like this is how i am this is how you are so everybody knows each other so it's like it's almost like even it gives that sense of accountability so you yeah. have pastors who are accountable for you you also have friends who are accountable for you so it reminds me of acts of leadership yeah. one of the other um, chapters is um in other leadership says that know right. where you are mm-hmm. know where you are now so that you can know what you are and if you don't first admit that you know fornication is a problem mm-hmm. you will not even have direction to know where to go mm-hmm. but when you first now start to admit that this is where i am i fornicated i have done this i've done that unless you are able to really admit to yourself first you cannot even approach someone else to yeah. even have that accountability system, you mm-hmm. won't have it. Do not even go a step further to not have counselors and pastors that you are open with mm-hmm. enough to tell them that this is the issue that I'm going through and this is the challenge I have. That that's the only way you know, I like that point of honesty because it, it you first need to get to that point of leaving yourself out of deception. Mm-hmm. You know where you are, I've led myself now I'm here. So now this is where I'm going to. Yeah. And I mean that, I think it may be the book Art of Leadership, or maybe Good General, there's also another point which is similar to this. It says, know yourself, mm-hmm. know your enemy, and mm-hmm. in a thousand battles you never lose. Yeah. See, so I think it's, it's all the same thing about the honesty. Yeah. And like you said, it has, keeps being said, first, honest to yourself. Yeah. Because that overcomes what we were speaking about last week, about self-deception. Yeah. Yeah. And then once you can be honest to yourself, then honest to somebody else. Mm-hmm. Because let us come boldly. And we'll find ways to help. 
to serve and then things can get better mm -hmm. you can be saved you can be helped and so on so i mean as you're watching you know honesty is really mm -hmm. an important, important point one. and honesty side by side with honesty is openness mm -hmm. and if you can be open you can get help and you may be struggling with something at home mm -hmm. i want to encourage you that you know get in touch with us get in touch with me yeah. and on the flow church um, page facebook Instagram or if you have our numbers um, get in touch with us and ask for help be open be honest see that you're struggling with fornication if it's fornication maybe it's something else but today we're talking about fornication so maybe fornication is a real issue that you have in your life and you're really stuck and you're really struggling maybe you may even say that okay from watching this you know what to do but it's been a problem get in touch with us so that we can help you we are here to help you it's something that we You'll be surprised that so many other people have also been through and have been able to overcome because others have helped them. Mm -hmm. That's why we are here. We are the Flow Church. We are here to help you. Mm -hmm. and we are here to help ourselves. Get in touch with us and we'll be happy, trust me, very happy to help you to overcome mm -hmm. this spiritual problem mm -hmm. of fornication. Mm -hmm. I just feel like, I mean, like Anira said, um, prayer, grace and mercy. I feel like praying for you as you're there. I mean, I know some of you are struggling um, with fornication, but I believe this is the beginning yeah. of your deliverance from it. Amen. So I, I just want to pray with you. I mean, Father, in the name of Jesus, I know that we, we are mere human beings, Lord, with weaknesses and struggles and difficulties, Lord, difficulties that we are struggling with, Lord, struggling to overcome. Though we want to, though we try to, the spirit is so willing, but the flesh is weak. But Lord, we are asking that you, you do it for us, Lord. And Father, deliver us from this problem. Deliver us from this issue. Deliver us from this spirit of fornication, Lord. Father, that it will no longer from today be mentioned or be said or be heard from us, Lord, that we have been involved in fornication, Lord. Father, deliver us. Some of us have had ancient issues and ancient records of fornication lord we bind and we we, we cast out that spirit Amen. from our lives today lord this is the end mm -hmm. from today lord it is no longer lord Amen. we are beginning a new life and we know it's by your grace lord and by your mercy Amen. have continue to have mercy on us lord continue to help us lord that we will be holy and separated and consecrated as you intended for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I mean, that's that's such a blessing. You know, believe it, believe in this prayer that I have just prayed. Truly, you have been delivered from the Spirit. Amen. And it's time for you to embark on the spiritual ways and also the physical ways of avoiding fornication. And I believe your life and this this problem is ended from today. Mm -hmm. But remember to get in touch with us if you need help, you need support. Mm -hmm. Just get in touch with us. We will help you with that. But I also know that there are also some people who are still watching right now who, um, apart from the fact that you've been involved in fornication or, fornica or fornication is part of your life, you actually don't even have Christ. Mm -hmm. You don't have Christ. As was said earlier, you, you, you probably lack understanding but and you lack wisdom and you, you lack knowledge but you know the beginning of all of that is, is fearing God and salvation mm -hmm. so I want to give you the opportunity right now to receive Christ into your life because without Christ you actually cannot overcome this problem mm -hmm. you can try you can try you can try but without Christ without the Holy Spirit you cannot easily be a Christian mm -hmm. or overcome any difficulty or problem or temptation that you may be saving, saving you may be experiencing right now. Mm -hmm. So right now I want you to join me. You are watching at home or wherever you are and you want to receive Christ into your life. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Mm -hmm. You can only win, you can only overcome, you can only have glory if Christ is in you. And I want to pray with you today that you will receive Christ and that from today, Christ will be in you. Mm -hmm. And through that, your life will be a glorious life. So you want to say this prayer with me if you want to receive Christ. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus, 
I come to you today. I come to you today as I am, as, as, I am. as, a, sinner, as a sinner, as somebody who has done many bad things, somebody who's done many wrong things, somebody who's made many mistakes. But I know your love, and I know your blood can wash away all my sins and make me pure again. And make me pure again. Thank you for this great salvation. Thank you for this great salvation. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for washing my sins. Thank you for washing my sins. And thank you for making me your child. And thank you for making me your child. Satan, Satan, I am no longer a child of yours. I, am no longer a child. I have nothing to do with you. I have nothing to do with you. you have no longer have a hold on me. You no longer have a hold on me. I have nothing to do with you. I have nothing to do with you. I have nothing to do with you. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for everybody who has given their life to you today, Lord. It's the beginning of a great life. It's the beginning of a wonderful life. It's the beginning of a blessed life. Thank you, Lord, for such great salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Look, you have done a great thing. You have received Christ. And because you have received Christ, you now have the hope and the power to overcome every challenge in your life. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Wow. And I want you to do one more thing. I want you to get in touch with us. The number is on your screen right now. Get in touch with us um, in case you, for some reason you don't have a phone but you're on social media, you can also send us a message on any of the Flow Church um, platforms, or if maybe even mine, you can find me, Flow and Leo, on pretty much all the platforms, or Leonard. Um, you can get in touch with me, send me a message, and I will be happy to chat with you and to help you in this new and wonderful walk of yours in Christ Jesus. Mm. Amen. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, I think that's all we have for today. Oh, yeah. Yes, I know you wanted it to go on and on. And there's a song which says, I want my honeymoon to go on. And I know you feel the same. I want flow with you too. Oh, that's all. Oh, yes. Don't worry. Come in, come in on um, all platforms soon. iTunes and I don't know what the other ones are. It's only iTunes, really. Yeah. All the Android ones are. Oh, yeah, forget about them. Uh, Spotify, 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 Apple Music, Spotify, coming soon. But it's come to an end. Yeah. Every great thing comes to an end apart from heaven. Uh, so yes, we'll be there. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. But before we go, please do take out a good offering and give the Lord a good offering. I believe the Lord has really, really spoken to us today. I believe the Lord has really, really solved a lot of problems today. I believe the Lord has really delivered a lot of people today. Mm -hmm. And you want to show appreciation for that, mm -hmm. not for me, not for any of these guys here, but for God, yeah. to God, to God. Because everything that we've spoken, everything that we've done here, every word that has come out of our mouth has been the word of God. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And I believe that word of God is benefiting and affecting your life today. So why don't you show some appreciation? You know, if somebody came to appreciate you, you would judge their level of appreciation by what they gave mm -hmm. or the value of what they gave mm -hmm. so know that god also follows the same pattern how do i know god follows the same pattern because the bible says that we were made in his likeness mm -hmm. which means he's like us so the way you behave think do your things it's also the way god does things that's what it means to be like somebody so god is judging you or judging your appreciation by what you give so make sure you give something that is truly representative of how much you appreciate god and how much you appreciate him for this word that he has given you today mm -hmm. the details are on your screen right now uh, all the different platforms Beautiful. of transfer work all around the world every single oh, yes. thing if it doesn't work or it's not working in your country because somebody had that and they got in touch with me mm -hmm. and it was solved in a moment. So in case you're unable to give an offering for whatever reason, please do send a message, send a comment. Yeah. And we will do our best yes. yeah. to make sure Beautiful. that you do not miss out yeah. on 
being able to appreciate the Lord. Yes. Oh, yes. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, I was going to pray for you, but you know, I think our full church pastor will pray for you right now. Be blessed. Lift your hands for your blessing. Let the blessing of the Lord rest upon you. Put your hand on your body. Receive healing of even what you don't know about. Every long-standing pain, disease, condition, every life-threatening disease and problem, receive healing for it right now. The Lord extend your life. The Lord give you days, years, and life abundantly. And the Lord bless you. Lift your two hands. The Lord bless you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and the Lord cause you to have favor before him whom we stand. The Lord bless you and the Lord give you peace in Jesus name. And everyone said, Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Beautiful, beautiful. I'm blessed by that. Oh, and yes. I know you're also blessed by that. Oh, yes. And we have come to an end. Mm -hmm. uh, I know. But just for a few hours, because at 4 a.m. GMT, ah. we'll be right back here Amen. on the Flow Church channel. Beautiful. And beautiful. I mean, for in just tomorrow, in a few hours' time, yeah. Friday, oh, yeah. we'll be back here. For the flow prayer meeting so make sure you are awake make sure you are alert make sure you are sharing the link and make sure that you are deep in the prayer mm -hmm. because truly prayer changes things amen but for now from leo and my friends joshua sati and yola we are done please so until next week let it flow Oh, 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 oh,